Welcome to Sojo Videos. My name is Joan and today we're going to be making a bunny beanie. The last time I did a knitted beanie, which was the cat ear beanie, I think people really, really liked this. So I decided to come back with another knitting project. So the knitted bunny ear beanie I'll be doing today is inspired by these photos that I've been seeing around the internet. And once again, I just want to do a knitting project because as I cannot crochet, I feel like a lot of people can crochet a lot of things, but I wanted to do a knitting tutorial for those of you guys like me who can't crochet and gotta knit everything instead. Materials are listed down below and so are the timestamps. I think it's time to get started. So here I'll be grabbing my knitting needles and I'll be using size 10, although I don't really give much thought into what needles I use, it's just the ones I have. Same thing goes for my yarn. I'm just using this black yarn, a medium four size. And that's basically all you'll need to make your knitted bunny ear beanie. So we're first gonna start off with casting on our yarn. Taking the end of my string, I'm going to loop it around as you can see, and I'm gonna cross over the end of my yarn. And the idea is that I wanna put a segment of that end through the loop. As you can see, I'm pulling here but I don't wanna pull the end through the loop all the way. So here I'm going to pinch it down and make sure that it doesn't go through. I'm gonna pull on the segment I pulled through the loop to close it all off, and this is gonna make a slip knot. As you can see here, just by pulling on the end, I can make the loop smaller and tighter. So I'm gonna slip my needle through and basically just tighten up that slip knot. This is gonna act as the first stitch for our knitting. And with that, we can get started with our casting on stitches. Just a disclaimer, I'm gonna generally show the process as best I can, but I am not a professional knitter in any case. So if you want a full tutorial on that, I highly recommend checking out someone who actually does knitting tutorials, but I'm going to try my best and show my process here. So for casting on, after starting my first step of putting my needle through the original stitch I had, I'm gonna take some yarn, loop it around that needle, and basically pull that segment through the original stitch I put my needle through. As you can see here, it's going to form a loop. I'm going to pull on it just to make it bigger and a bit easier to now slip onto the original needle from before. I'm going to slip out the needle I put through, tighten the yarn, and as you can see, that makes your second stitch. I'm just gonna repeat that whole process to continue casting on my stitches. So putting my needle through the stitch I just made, looping yarn around, pulling it through the stitch so I make a loop with the new needle, and then putting it over the original needle before and tightening the yarn, and there I have a new stitch. And once you get the hang of that, we're just gonna keep repeating the same process over and over again to cast on our stitches. Now it's important to also keep track of how many stitches we've casted on. So as you can see here, I'm starting to count and keep track of all of them. And to start off the project, I'll be making the beanie first. So I'm gonna be casting on quite a lot of stitches. In total, I'll be casting on 75 stitches. Now this number is actually gonna vary depending on how big your head size is because the amount of stitches we're casting on is how much it's going to wrap around your head. Once you've figured out the sizing and cast it on the appropriate amount of stitches, we're gonna get started on knitting. Now once again, if you haven't knitted at all before and you wanna learn, I would definitely recommend checking out some other videos, but I will try my best to show my method and just to let you guys know that I am doing the garter stitch method. So the way we start off is basically the same in the sense that I'm going to put in my needle onto the first stitch on my other needle. I'm gonna take the yarn and make sure to not tighten the stitch from before too tight. We're just gonna gently pull on it, wrap it around my needle, pull the segment through the original stitch I stabbed my needle through and just slip it off. And you can see that it ends up on the other needle on the other side. To make it easier, make sure to move your stitches up close to the end of the needle. I'm gonna stab it through, wrap it around, pull it through, and pull it off that needle, and just keep repeating that process. Make sure you also have access to nice, long, and untangled yarn, because I swear that stuff always gets tangled. If anyone has any tips on how to avoid that, please let me know, because it becomes such a hassle. But yeah, just repeating that process, I'm going to knit and basically stitch until all of my stitches are on the new needle. So as you can see here, slipping it off, I have now transferred all of my stitches and I've knitted a whole row. Now it definitely doesn't look pretty, but trust that it's going to become a nice long rectangle that's going to become the base of our beanie. Before I keep going, I'm gonna quickly tie a knot at the end of the rectangle where we first cast it on, just to make sure that nothing gets loose. And I'm just gonna continue knitting on my second row. 
Once you get comfortable with the stitches, it's really easy to get into a really nice calming rhythm of just putting in your needle, wrapping it around, slipping it off, and just continuing the process over and over again. Everyone's knitting style is also really different. For me, I like to keep my stitches somewhat loose on my needle so that I can still kind of slide them around, but they're not super, super tight or super, super loose. Whatever your style may be, just make sure you stay consistent. That's going to make sure that your rows and your stitches look even and around the same size. So as I said earlier, again, the 75 stitches or the stitches that we're putting on here, which is what is making our knitted rectangle so long this way, is the length that goes around our head. So as you can see, earlier when I first started, it definitely looked a lot shorter. The stitches just kind of filled up all along the needle, but as we're knitting, it's definitely getting a lot larger, enough that if we were to stretch everything out, it would go past the needle, which is a good thing. Right now, the rows that we're knitting so that this rectangle lengthens like this, is going to be the actual length that goes on so the actual height so i'm just going to keep knitting more rows so that this bad boy can turn into a beanie size rectangle like this <laughs> so since we have so many stitches and rows this probably might be the most time consuming part of the project is just knitting our whole rectangle but i just did it as i did my travels over the summer and as i watched tv shows and just whenever i wanted to relax because i think knitting as a pastime is a pretty relaxing thing and it ends up with a really Really rewarding project. So as you can see here, I've made quite a bit of progress in my knitting and I can basically wrap it around all around my head and it's about the height that I want my beanie to be at. Also, as you can see, the knitting has definitely evened itself out and all the stitches look pretty even and neat in the rows. Since I'm happy about the height of the hoodie, it is now time to cast off. So for casting off, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to make two stitches onto my next needle. But before I go on with my third stitch, I'm actually gonna take the first stitch I put on and I'm actually gonna pull it over the second stitch and over off of the needle. So you'll see I'll end up with one stitch. I'm gonna stitch one more on. You're always gonna want two on that right hand side. And then I'm gonna take the bottom stitch and just pull it off and over the needle once again. You're basically just going to repeat this process until we've casted off most of our stitches. And you can check your progress by looking at the knitted parts. You can see that we've casted off and it's made an edge in our knitting. And for the last final step to fully cast off, again I'm taking the second stitch, pulling it over, and you're left with your last one. So I'm going to pull my needle, stretch it, and we're basically going to be making a loop to tie everything off. Before I could fully finish my project, however, something tragic happened as I tried to pick something off the ground. No, 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 no! Oh my god, oh my god. So yeah, long story short, I accidentally undid half the stitches in my last row, but I ended up salvaging everything together and ending up back to where we left off. Again, if this isn't a reminder that I'm not a professional knitter, I don't know what is. Anyways, after snipping off the end of my yarn, I'm going to open up my loop, pull my string through, and just make a simple knot to close everything off. I'm going to tie one more knot on it just to make sure everything is secure, and then you're basically done the rectangular part of your beanie. So once again, the idea is that I'll be wrapping this long rectangle around my head to make the beanie, and to do that, we're going to attach the two ends together to make our beanie or circular shape. So taking my yarn once again, I'm also going to take a crochet hook, which is going to help basically thread the ends together. So to start off, I'm going to first put in my yarn and make a knot to kind of secure it to the end of my beanie. So I'm going to put the yarn through both ends and starting off at the bottom corner of my rectangle, I'm just going to tie my knot to secure everything down and then we can get started with threading our yarn. I'm going to put my crochet hook through the nearest opening I can find along one of the ends of my rectangle, pull it taut, and again, I don't want to find the most outer edge piece of yarn because that's just going to make holes when I thread everything together, but again, I'm just going to find the closest opening I can. I'm also going to make sure to pull my string mildly taut, I don't want it too tight so that it shrivels everything together. But as you can see here, I'm just kind of going back and forth from the right side, threading in and then just pulling it out after I've threaded it through on the other side. And I'm just going to continue this, keeping the spacing between each of the stitches around the same until I've reached the top corner and the ends are fully attached to each other. 
To finish this part, I'm just gonna make a knot at the top stitch, as you can see I'm doing here. Double knot it just to make sure everything is fully pulled together and then snip off the yarn. You should see both ends fully attached. And now you can finally see the shape starting to take form. We still have to close off the top of the hat. And here I'm also feeling out the height of the hat and knowing I can just curl over the edge if I feel like it's too long. So now I'm just going to do the same method of just stitching close the top edge of our hat to fully close it off and make it into a beanie. And as usual, I'll just be starting off with a knot to secure our yarn and then just putting my crochet hook through and stitching it and threading it to close off the top of the beanie. And again, don't forget the tip of going as close to the edge as you can without getting the last thread of yarn that's there, otherwise it's going to make it look a bit patchy and with holes. And just stay consistent with your spacing and which holes you're threading through and slowly you'll see your beanie come together as you close up that top edge. Once you're done threading it all the way through, you're just going to make a knot and of course I'm going to double knot it as well to ensure everything is secure as you can see. And there we have our beanie! Now up to this point, the process is pretty similar to my cat beanie if you guys saw where we also just took a rectangle, stitched it up to make our beanie shape. But instead of making cat ears, we'll be making bunny ears. So now we're gonna be starting off making our first ear. I'm going to cast on about 12 stitches. Now this size and how many stitches you cast on will determine the width of your bunny ear. And so when we knit, the rows will be making the length of our bunny ear. So for me, I chose to go with around 12 stitches for my ear. I thought it was the perfect amount of not being too skinny, but also not too wide. And then I just continued knitting my rows to elongate my ear. So as I knitted, I made sure to keep in mind the reference of how long I wanted my ear to be in comparison to my hat. And I wanted to stop right before maybe five-ish centimeters before the actual bottom of my ear. Now before I show the next steps, I just wanted to preface something really quickly. Because I was going for a similar design as this you see on the screen, I wanted my ear to grow outwards before coming back in towards a point. However, I definitely overestimated my knitting abilities and it ended up turning out not as nice as I wanted to. I don't think it necessarily turned out ugly in the end, but if I were to redo this project, I would probably skip this upcoming step I'm about to show you. But for transparency's sake, and if anyone's interested, I'm still going to show my full process of how I made my bunny ears. But I would recommend skipping this increasing stitch step and instead going straight to the decreasing stitch step to end off your bunny ear and a point because I think that would probably look a bit better. So to increase the width of my bunny ears, what I did basically was knit until I was down to my last stitch. And I started off the stitches normal, putting my needle through, looping my yarn around. But instead of pulling my stitch all the way off, I pulled it through the stitch, put it back through, looped it again, and then pulled it back out and that essentially made a new stitch. So what I essentially did was just add on a new stitch. So when counting up my stitches, I would have an extra one at the very end. So it was with this method that I wanted to increase my stitches and make my bunny ear a bit wider before having it fully come to a point. And it wasn't necessarily the method that I had a bone to pick with. I think for my first time doing increasing stitches, it was fine. It was more so that I increased the stitches a bit too much too fast in the beginning. And so instead of a gradual slope outwards of a bunny ear and an increase in thickness, it just kind of bulged out in more of a circle shape. So take this with a grain of salt. I wouldn't recommend this step if you're making your own bunny hat beanie, but if you want to make one like mine, this is how I did it. Now onto the step that I would recommend you do to end off your bunny ears in a nice gradual point. I'm just going to knit through all my stitches until I have the last two. What I'm going to do is put my needle through both of the stitches and then I'm going to proceed as normal. So loop my yarn through, pull it out, and just take it off the needle. This in turn decreases the stitch by one and thus will contribute to the decreased width of the bunny ear to end off in a nice point so that it actually looks like a bunny ear. To make sure that the shape was a gradual decrease, I just made sure to knit all my stitches until I had the last two, did the decreasing stitch, and just continued that over and over again as I knitted. 
And as you can see here, as we decrease in stitch, it starts making an arrow shape or coming together in a point and gradually decreasing. Now, once I was left with three stitches, I thought that this would be a good place to just end it as I didn't want my end to be very pointy. I wanted it to still be round. So I just knitted on my two stitches and cast it off like usual. So I took my first original stitch, pulled it off my needle, took on the second stitch, pulled the second one off my needle, and then just ended up tying everything in a knot and successfully cast it off, finishing my very first bunny ear. Okay, this is actually me after I finished stitching my first ear. I'm just gonna show it to you guys. Yes, I know it looks ratchet, I know it looks bad. This part is like, you know, pretty normal as we've seen so far, and then you just kind of this like lump and then decrease. Um, <laughs> this is my first time trying to increase stitches and decrease stitches in any knitting work that I've done. But I just wanna be transparent about how like beginner I am, even when I do these like DIY tutorials. Like I very much, when I do tutorials, I'm just kind of trying new things. I'm not doing it as if I'm an expert. I'm definitely not an expert. Like, would an expert do this? <laughs> but kind of my philosophy when making these DIYs is trying to make it as easy as possible and showing people that it's not gonna go perfect, especially not your first time. Like I get comments of people being like, oh, I could never do that. That looks so hard. Like, how did you do that? Like, I don't know. I just tried it. Even with DIYs, they may look really hard, but it still doesn't hurt to try and give it a shot. It's definitely not perfect in any way, but I still love it. And I'm gonna give it another shot with my second ear. You know, I'm trying to be transparent about the flaws and all the hiccups that happen when you're trying or doing a DIY. And so after finishing my first ear, I moved on to make my second. And of course, to keep everything consistent and nice looking, I went with the same amount of stitches to make sure my ear was the same width and measured approximately the same length before I increased and decreased my stitches. And yes, while I wanted to just decrease my stitches after I realized what the adding stitches looked like, I wanted to make sure my ears were obviously symmetrical and somewhat looked the same. So I still went with the method of increasing and then decreasing my stitches. Honestly, I think the hardest part of making the second year was making sure that it was about the same length as my first one. So if I were to go back and do this project again, I'd probably keep count of all the rows I was doing, which is kind of a hassle, but I think the effort would pay off in the end to just make sure that your ears look as nice as possible. But anyways, with that, I finished my second ear and now we're ready to put our whole beanie all together. So the idea is that I want to attach the ends of my ears to the corners of my beanie. As you can see, I'm drafting out here. And like how we stitched together the beanie, I'm just going to take my crochet hook and some black yarn and we're just going to go into one of the corners, put my crochet hook through. And I kind of wanted a scrunched look for my ear when I attached it to the beanie. So as you can see here, as I'm putting it through my ear, I am scrunching it and folding it over before fully pushing my crochet hook through, threading the yarn through as well. And then threading everything back into the hat to attach everything together. Making sure I pull the string taut, as you can see the scrunched effect is there. I'm then going to tie a knot with the yarn, and of course double knot it to make sure it's secure, and that way my ear is attached to the corner of my beanie. Now to increase the stability, since I didn't want my ear to just snap off if one piece of yarn were to break, I did this one or two more times. And I also made sure to see if there's any edges of the ear that were still kind of unnatural looking. As you can see here, this part isn't really attached. So I went in with my crochet hook and attached any loose ends as well. This kind of helped clean up the look of the hat a little bit just to make sure that everything looked pretty seamless and at the same time ensures that your ear is fully secured to your hat. And with that, you're fully done with your first ear attached to your beanie. Now, if there's any loose threads, as long as you made sure you tied everything down securely, you can snip those off to make sure your beanie gives off a nice clean look. And once I was happy with how it looked and how secured it was on, I moved on to attaching my second ear. Again, using the same method as I did on the other side, that makes me finished with my beanie. And then time to actually try it on. <laughs> it's so cute. You got the ears. Oh my God, they're like little paddles. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I got the 360 beanie. I think it was 
basically a success. I think they have turned out really cute. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!